Fortunately, the definite integral has uh, has numerous very nice properties, so that we can use those in, ca in making calculations. Yeah. So, for instance, the integral over a constant function over an inter interval a b equals c times b minus a. Well, why is that? Well, if we sample points, then these points all give rise to the same function value, which is this constant c. So if we look at the sums we defined, so we take the function value in the sampled points xi star times delta x, then we see that this is just summing over n terms which take the value c times the length of the interval b minus a. So for any sum, we get the same number c times b minus a. Also, a nice property is something that is is linearity so if we take if we combine if we sum two functions f and g under the integral symbol then we may as well choose to calculate the integral of a b of fx first and then that of g and then add those numbers well a proof is as follows so we form the the sums so we have a sample point f, uh, xi star, so we get fxi star plus gxi star. And now the thing is that we can take those sums apart. Yeah, Since we have a finite sum, we can just add up all terms related to f and those related to g. And if we now take a limit, then we see that we get an integral of a, b, f, x, d, x plus the integral of a, a, b, g, x, d, x. Well, the third property is that the same holds for minus signs. So instead of having a plus sign, we could as well have chosen minus signs. Though. So the integral of a, b, f, x minus g of x, d, x equals the integral of a, b, f, x, d, x minus the integral of a, b, g, x, d, x. The integral over c times fx dx over, over an interval a, b equals c times the integral over a, b fx dx. So writing constants inside a, an integral does not do something else than multiplying the integral of a, b fx dx by c. Well, why is this? Well, again, look at the Riemann sum. So we sum over all c times fx i star times delta x. Now, each of the terms carries the same c, so we can just choose to write the c out, to take this, the c out of the sum. And uh, since the sum converges to the integral of a, b times f, x, d, x, we get c times a, b, f, x, d, x as an integral. So, the other property is if f is greater or equal than zero on the interval a, b, then the integral is also larger or equal than zero. Well, the proof is very simple since the integral, the definite integral from a to b fx dx is the limit of the Riemann sums. Um, we just need to show that these Riemann sums are non-negative. Yeah, since non-negative terms cannot converge to something negative. Well, that's easy to see since uh, fxi star is always non-negative and delta x is always chosen positive. So we get a, non a sum of our products of non-negative terms, which indeed is non-negative. If we can compare functions, then we can also compare their integrals, respective definite integrals. So if fx is larger or equal than gx on a closed interval ab, then the definite integral with respect to f is larger or equal than the definite integral with respect to g. Well, why is that? Well, we use the former property and uh, look at fx minus g of x, which is a non-negative function. So if we, take, if we determine the definite integral of fx minus gx, then this leads to a non-negative integral. Now use the property that the integral of the difference of f minus g is linear in the sense that it equals the integral of f minus the integral over g, which is then, of course, larger or equal than zero. 
in which case the integral of f is larger than the integral over g. Well, as a result, also the following holds. So suppose f is bounded on the left-hand side by small m and on the right-hand side by capital M, then if we take the integral over m, then we get the small m times b minus a, and this is smaller or equal than the integral of ab fx dx, and which in turn, in turn is also smaller than capital M times b minus a. And this is just combining the fact that we are integrating over a constant and uh, the property in point six. Yeah, so define, for instance, g of x being the larger value, so capital M, then 6 says that the integral of fx dx is smaller or equal than the integral ab of gx, which is m. And integrating over a constant is just merely multiplying this constant by the length of the interval, b minus a. Yeah, something similar can of course be done for small m. The following property deals with putting absolute value signs. So we know that a definite integral is a number which can be negative, and so we can uh, uh, make it positive by putting absolute value signs. And we see that uh, if we first uh, determine the integral over f and put absolute value signs, that this is usually a lower value than if we would just look at fx absolute value. So we have the following property that fx is, of course, smaller or equal than the absolute value of fx and larger than minus the absolute value of x. Yeah, so if we use the comparison of those functions that we get, then the integral of ab over minus the absolute value of fx, dx, is smaller than the integral over fx from a to b which in turn is also smaller or equal than the integral over the absolute value of fx dx. And also notice that the first integral on the left hand side equals actually minus the integral ab of the absolute value fx dx. Yeah, just take the c equal minus 1 outside the integral sign. Well, this merely says that on the left-hand side we have a number with a minus sign, on the right-hand side we have a positive number. That and the definite integral of a b f x is in between those both of those numbers. So the absolute value of the integral a b f x d x smaller or equal than the integral of the absolute value f x d x. Well, this property can also be illustrated as follows. Just look at the following picture where we have a function with negative parts and positive parts on a b so in yellow we see a negative part in the definite integral and uh, in red we see a positive part so that the integral from a b f x dx is basically the red area minus the yellow area and now if we first determine the absolute value of f x then the yellow negative part turns into the positive uh, white part, so that the integral of a b uh, of the absolute value of f x equals the white part and the red part. And just think of of it yourself: why this is always larger than the absolute value of the red minus the yellow part. The final property, or property 9, that we will discuss for the definite integral at this moment is um, the fact that we may split up the interval AB in uh, two pieces. We can subdivide AB in AC and CB. And uh, if we look at the integrals A to C of fx dx, and cb of x dx, they will exist, and if we sum them, we get the original one ab of x dx. Yeah, this is illustrated in the following picture. So, suppose we have a function on defined on ab, and we cut up ab and ac and cb, then the nice property of the definite integral is that, that we may determine the integral from a to c and from c to b 
add those pieces and we will get the integral from a to b fx dx. So the integral fx dx equals 1 plus 2 